Welcome everyone, my name is Sven Lovato and I've been with Tremco Roofing for the past two years. Thank you. And uh, I was hired out of the contracting side of business and came in to start doing some research on behalf of Tremco as well as lead some of our products and marketing divisions. So my extensive background in contracting, working everything from developers to general contractors and trade contractors, allowed me to put together a bunch of financial models and analyses prior to coming to Tremco and I've continued this work. I attended the University of Toronto for a number of years, which made me, uh, shall we say, a pathological researcher. So research is something that I actually really enjoy doing. The fact that I've been able to combine that concept of research with practical knowledge gained through experience really sort of appeals to me. So uh, Keep going. <laughs> a couple of quick items. Uh, if, if you come up and talk to me later on, you'll notice I'm wearing a very, very old pair of shoes. And I think it's an interesting analogy to life cycle because I, I paid a lot of money for these shoes about 18 years ago and I still wear them quite a bit. Had them repaired a couple of times, had them reshined. But when I look at the overall net life cycle cost that those shoes cost me, it was a much better investment at a large capital investment at the front side with a bunch of maintenance and repair over time than it would have been to buy a new pair of shoes every year. So these continue to be comfortable, they continue to work well, and I think it's a useful analogy for what we're going to be talking about. And some of the knowledge gained as well through practical research, I did a number of, of courses at the University of, of Michigan for finance, so what we're going to look at right now is regrettably a lot of pretty heavy duty mathematics. So I come by my fat head naturally. In fact, my head is so fat that I had some medical procedures performed yesterday on, on behalf of a researcher. And it turns out that my head is so fat that it didn't fit into the device with the earphones on that I was supposed to wear. So I apparently have the record for one of the largest, fattest heads that they've ever had to do this test on. So uh, how do we get that? So trunconomics is something that I started talking about uh, in the, in the past year, and really, what are the state of the art, art measurements? And, and there's no real consensus as to what forms the basis for, uh, for life cycle costing. There's a number of different schools of thought, some of them quite traditional, some of them are changing in nature, but there's some very common themes that are, that are significant throughout. You know, we, we know that inflation is going to make products more expensive in the future. The Japanese economy is perhaps an exception to that rule where they've gone into negative, uh, uh, negative investment uh, systems. So, and the cost of maintenance and repair over time are going to be greater than the initial acquisition costs. So when you first make, build a building, those costs, although they are significant, they are not the most significant part of the cost over the life cycle of the building. And the relative rate of return of a corporate entity, so look at a, a company or, or an entity, uh, if it's institutional, they're going to have different rates of returns on what their investment or underlying uh, internal rates of return are for the way that they do business. So. Every, every different market sector is going to have a slightly different outcome for what they believe is going to be less expensive over the lifetime of that building on a life cycle cost perspective. And of course there's two basic ideas that are consistent for life cycle costing and one of them is net present value, ASTM value. We'll take a look, very quick look at that because it, it's relevant towards the sort of measurements you put into an analysis. And then the net present value on a finance evaluative me method. So the ASTM model for, uh, for life cycle costing is very significant because it's got a number of very interesting, interesting items that it brings up. So they talk about the net present value and you can either uh, can discount that over time or you don't discount it over time. But most importantly, we have to look at for life cycle cost is the investment costs, the replacement costs, because we know general, as, as a generality, we're going to have elements of the building that are going to require replacement over time. The resale value at the end of the study period, which of course would be the residual value as other people will talk mm -hmm. about. The annually recurring operating maintenance and repair costs, accepting energy costs. Then non-annually recurring operating maintenance and repair costs, again, accept energy costs. And then the cost of energy. And changes to the building codes will make that cost of energy factor supremely important looking forward. So we really need to make sure that we're designing the right insulating systems and the proper building envelope to make sure that we're taking into account energy models for the latest versions of the Canada Building Code, the Federal Building Code, as well as the Ontario Building Code. And this is going throughout North America and throughout the rest of the world. In some ways, we follow the Europeans in our modeling. They're using much more insulation in their buildings than they have been doing so for decades already. So we're kind of chasing some leadership around there. Now the other analysis we need to take a look at, and this is where the math comes in, you can 
either shut your eyes for a couple of moments and out of sheer horror, or you can listen along, in which we took a look at what is the future value of something. So we need to estimate what it's going to cost in the future based upon the cost of inflation. And that's going to be the principal multiplied by itself multiplied as an exponent of the rate of inflation. And the discount value, which is, can be looked at as one item, is investment set aside, how much you need to invest in today's dollars to pay for that future investment to make sure that you can cover those costs. Again, looking at what the current state of the art is for life cycle costing, I direct you to, and I, and I actually suggest you take a short read of what Jutta Schade has done in, uh, in Sweden. She put together this paper for the European Union or the European uh, uh, community, and it's a paper that first came out in 2006, I believe, and she's following this up for a number of other, with a number of other initiatives that are very current to what life cycle really, really is. And when we look at some of these items, if you can see here, Raymond and Stern point out that for the construction client, the initial cost can be determined easily and reliably, but maintenance and operation costs are less predictable as they extend into the future. For that reason, initial cost is used as the main base for decision making today. Now, I would argue we also need to look at what those long-term costs really are, and in many cases, in Tremco specifically, has the ability to determine what some of those future costs, because we understand so finitely what our future risks are. So one of the hats that I wear at Tremco is managing all of the warranties across Canada. So I have a very, very unique understanding of just what our loss ratio is. So because of that reliability, because we've got such a good foundation of understanding how rarely we actually suffer roofing failures, we know that we've got the financial capability to back up the warranties, which makes us very unique in the, in the roofing market. But it's important that we need to start looking at what those quantified future costs are. And we also believe in data should be shared to avoid duplicated efforts of collecting such information. So we do believe in open information and, and driving this forward and getting the information out to you. So as a, as a scholar, amongst scholars, I would you know, appeal to you to bring any information that you might have or new thoughts to this process to me because I'd welcome to in integrate that into it. But again, we really got to understand that over the lifetime of the building, that initial construction cost is about 25% of the life cycle costs, even when we look at a 25-year limit of that life cycle analysis. And when we go into longer models, again, that initial capital cost is even more insignificant, depending on the type of elements chosen. This is very conventional life cycle wisdom. I would look at uh, the green line that you can see that starts at the high end on the left side. And tapers off to the right hand side would be capital costs. So essentially the idea used to be the more money you spent on the capital side, the less money, which was the red line, you would spend on maintenance and repair over the long term. Conversely, the less money you spent as you track that line down to the bottom corner, the less money you spent on capital, the more money that you would spend on repair and maintenance over the long term. The blue, the blue line is actually the sum of the two values. So logically you would understand that by spending this much money on capital, that much money on repair, you're still gonna spend a boatload of money over the long term. So wouldn't it be more intelligent to find something in this sweet spot here where we're spending the correct amount of capital at the front side and the correct amount of maintenance repair over the long term to minimize the actual long term costs. So what are the real drivers? To, to finding this, and we've, we've found, again, by al analyzing this, and it's largely this experience began, I was working at a company called Semple Gooder, one of the largest roofing contractors around, and lots of experience, and the delight I had regularly was looking through data as I was sampling to find uh, anecdotal evidence, and realizing that they installed roofs that were 30, 40, 50, in fact, even 60 years old. The company at the time was 63 years old, and I was looking at buildings and looking at roofs that they had installed 60 years ago that were still in serviceable condition. So that really stands as testament to the quality of the labor forces that they've employed over time. And it really does reflect, the quality of labor does reflect the longevity of a system. So capital costs, we need to understand the proper decisions to make. So are we gonna choose the correct contractor, one that really knows what they're doing? Are we gonna choose the right materials, to something that's really going to last a long time? The durability, we know that the longer something lasts, the lower its future costs. Again, some of that logic from the, from the initial graph that we looked at. The replacement costs, without proper maintenance, an expensive replacement will be necessary. And that's 
Simple reality. And we got to understand that even the cost of repairs of something that has multiple minor failures, those costs of repairs can actually exceed a replacement cost. Maintenance costs, again, everything does need maintenance. And a perpetual item, and these do exist in the market, a perpetual item, correctly maintained, may just last forever. Now here's the red herring in the, in the mix, is consequent and subsequent costs. So every time we've got one of these minor re leaks, which John referred to as a catastrophic failure, what are the subsequent costs to them? What was the loss of use of the building element as a result of that building envelope failure or structural element within the building? Because really, you built a building to separate the ambient from the internal environment. And if we lose the use of that facility, like a hospital wing or a school facility, there's really some exceptional long-term costs that need to be looked at for that, that we need to protect ourselves against. How do we save costs? Pretty simple. Again, choose a product that will last a long time and install it with the quality of labor to perform. So this is pretty simple logic. And unfortunately, we're seeing too many areas in construction sector where insufficiently trained or educated labor forces are being employed to install systems that they really have no ability to perform with. And let's have a proper plan of maintenance and repair. This is, and again, I, I believe that we need to really plan and the certain elements of the building environment, the built-up environment that we really understand well with regards to maintenance. Roofing, by and large in the market, has not been well understood and has really been taken almost a cottage industry approach in the past. So let's change that. Let's be scientific about it. Let's collect data and make sure we've got the right answers going forward. Now we, again, you can close your eyes and hold your breath if you like, but unfortunately we're going to go through a little bit of math. And we're going to compare a couple of different ideas here. And what we've got here is three different roofing systems. Each column represents a roofing system. And at the top here, this, this would be the number per square meter. So you've got three sample costs, $120 per square meter, or $200 per square meter, or $320 per square meter, representative of different solutions for an initial roofing system. Reflective in that, ultimately, is how long are those roofing systems going to last? You know, this very cheap system at $120 may last 14 years. And indeed, we actually find that the, the cheaper roofing systems aren't even making it 10 years. So I'm giving the cheap roof, roofing system a couple of years advantage just to make the math a little bit easier to digest. A moderately priced system, decently priced, might, might last for 21 years before requiring a replacement or major upgrade. In this case, I'm calling it a major upgrade rather than a replacement. Or a very expensive roof system that might in fact last longer than the length of time that we need. We understand that typically a building is designed to last in the institutional sector approximately 60 years before it's repurposed into something else. So this level, this length of analysis is for 60 years. And in this case, let's design a roof system at $320 a square meter that will last longer than the building itself. Now important to that is how many times are you gonna to have to replace the, that, that roofing system? In the case of the cheapest roofing system, you'll have to replace that roofing system four times. The moderately priced system, you'll do an upgrade twice, and the very expensive but very durable system, you will never replace it. So you avoid all of those replacement costs. And now significantly as well, the replacement of a roofing system in the hospital sector, very typically the replacement of the original capital roof would be double to triple the initial cost. Well, I'm giving them another advantage here and only saying that the replacement cost is 150%. I have yet to see in the replacement market a roof only cost 150% of its initial capital cost. That's before inflation, by the way. In this system here, a 40% cost of initial capital cost to simply upgrade the roof membrane. And again, there's products available, and we'll be discussing those in, late, in, in, in later presentations this afternoon. But 40% of the capital cost as a suggested value. In fact, we're finding that these, shall we say, upgrade costs in the future are less than 40%. But again, we want to make the group the numbers reasonably close together so that it doesn't appear to be too falsified, shall we say. And again, zero replacement cost for something that was very expensive but very durable at the beginning. And in all cases, I've put down an accumulative annual maintenance cost. So we're still putting maintenance into any of these roof systems. For this particular, we're, we're pretending we're working in the public sector here. 0% rate of return for the investor. And we look at what is the present discounted value of these systems. And you can see the very cheap capital system over 60 years 
They're going to be spending $4.2 million of cash over that 60-year time period. The moderately priced system, which with upgrades throughout that system, two upgrades taking place, $1.4 million of cash expended. And of course, the very expensive roof system, which only required maintenance over that 60-year term, has the lowest cost. And again, this is kind of counterintuitive to what you'd really think at only spending a little bit under a million dollars. Now, when we go to somebody that's making a return on their investment, somebody making 8% rate of return, sorry, at, I guess this is a 10% rate of return, at that point in time, so this is being a very aggressive investment company that's got some real estate holdings, that very cheap roof, which cash flow of $4.2 million, their present discounted value or investment set aside would be about $600,000. And the upgradable system would still be cheaper at $515,000. And that very expensive system in this aggressive investment uh, scenario would actually be the most expensive. Now to compare all those so we get a bit of analysis, some people like to think in pictures rather than, rather than actual numbers. The green line here is representative of what the cash flow outlay or the net present value of something of that cheap roof is going to be. So again, the cheapest roof is actually the most expensive when we're at 0% rate of return, and it becomes one of the cheap concepts at 10% rate of return. The moderately priced system at 0% rate of return is much less expensive than the cheap roof over that 60-year sample, and it continues to be one of the cheapest systems, even at very aggressive rates of return of the investor. And that perpetual roof system kind of crosses the line right at this 3 and 4% rate of return, which is very close to the rate of inflation. So it, in some ways, the public sector, you might say, has a rate of return approximately equal to the cost of inflation at any one time because their tax base in, increases essentially at the rate of inflation. So that perpetual roof or the easily upgradable and maintained roof will actually be a very similar cost. So this is, and, and in both cases, it's much less than half the cost of that cheap solution to begin with. So I think that the simple graph there really speaks evident in, in and of itself, and I think that we really need to look at analyses like that to help ourselves make decisions in how we design the built-up built condition. Thank you.